Hello my name is Stuart Wright and this is the second video in my build diary of the construction of the new AV Forums Home Cinema. Uh, much of the focus of the design work has been on putting a new home cinema into an existing family room. Unlike our last home cinema which is a dedicated room that had a subwoofer in the corner and speakers and acoustic treatment panels on all the walls, uh, this home cinema we don't want to have any of that visible at all. The uh, visit to Genesis Technologies in Bracknell was um, inspirational, to say the least. Um, their demo room has acoustically transparent material stretched on all the walls, and that serves two purposes. First, it looks great. Um, I've got a couple of examples here to show you. There we go. And um, secondly, and most importantly, it allows you to place behind it um, speakers and acoustic treatment where they need to go uh, to get the best acoustic results um, without a thought for what they look like. So our design brief um, included that same material. Um, we said we wanted to have the same flexibility with regard to placing speakers and um, acoustic treatment. And also um, we asked for lots of shelving and storage space because we don't want any clutter in the room. Simon Ridley of Sontech um, came back with uh, a design concept that had no speakers or acoustic treatment on show. All the front speakers and the two subwoofers are built into the front wall behind acoustic material. They're completely invisible. Rather than uh, sticking out of the walls, all four surround speakers are also hidden. The side surrounds are built into shelving, which will have acoustic material covered doors and the rear surrounds are built into the rear bulkhead which will have acoustic material stretched along the underside. The bulkhead will serve several purposes um, aside from uh, containing the rear speakers um, it will also hide uh, the cabling, there's quite a lot of cabling up there, um, it will also enclose the projector and uh, it will also have of course lots of storage space in there um, a little bit like um, overhead storage in uh, aeroplanes actually it reminds me of. Um, something else about the uh, design that uh, I really liked is the fact that there are no radiators visible. So yeah, one of the issues obviously was uh, how, do we, how do we handle the heating in the room and the, uh, the radiators. There was two radiators in the room before, one at the front and one at the, uh, in, in the rear. Um, also we had surface mounted pipes which were you know, quite ugly within the room so we wanted to lose those as well. The, there was no scope to put the radiator at the front of the room because of the, uh, the screen and the full height. Uh, the room subwoofers, so uh, we had to lose one radiator, which meant we had to specify a radiator which was the right size for the room, which is about, needs to be about six and a half thousand BTU, which means we need to go longer, but we were restricted by height because we wanted to hide the radiator uh, within the design under the uh, Blu ray shelves, which are going to create the storage at either side of the room. Um, we've got a, a sort of a band that goes around the room in the, in the design, so we had a, a 600 mil. Um, band at the bottom of the room that um, meant we could put in a 500 mil radiator with its associated pipework at the back. That's going to then be uh, covered by an acoustic transparent fabric so when the room is finished you're not going to see that. So we've managed to quite nicely disguise those radiators but still get the efficiency of them and the, the heating is going to be required in the room. The patio doors present a bit of a problem. Um, we want to be able to completely control the light in the room when we're watching a movie. Uh, even on a bright sunny day, we need to have it completely dark in there. Um, bricking the patio windows up might have been an option for a dedicated room, but since we want to have this as a family room, uh, we really want to have the natural light. Yeah, as I say, so we had the, the challenges of the, the patio doors and the, the, so there's, there's two in the room. Um, they don't have a massive amount of natural lighting, so it's going to be nice to, to retain those when you're just using it as a you know a nice space to watch the TV or, or something like that, and you don't you know during the day. Uh, but obviously, when it's uh, used as a cinema and you really want it you know as dark as possible, they, they create some big challenges. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to put a, um, a dark uh, blackout blind, uh, roller blind. It's going to be electrically operated on over both the doors. Um, while some some roller blinds can be quite blackout blinds can be quite sort of officey and quite obtuse, they've got, a, they've got big horrible metal frames. We're actually going to build those into the side of the unit into the woodwork, um, so that's going to be quite hidden away. So when it's when it's up, it's not a it's not an ugly looking thing. And when they're down, they're obviously practical and, uh, and blacking the rooms out. 
The acoustic properties of a room have a huge influence over the sound quality in there and for that reason um, we've paid particular attention to the acoustic design of the room right from the outset. Obviously we've created a lot of uh, for woodwork and uh, sort of custom cabinetry built into the, uh, into the room. Um, the shelving that's going to hold the Blu-rays and these are all, they're all packed out of the room. What's that's created um, is various voids within the room. Obviously the screen wall as well, it's, you know, it's got voids where all the speakers uh, fit into. If we were to leave that open, there's a chance that the, the, because of the energy of uh, the speakers within the room, that you're going to get some resonance of those and you know, those themselves create you know, unwanted resonance within the, in the room and unwanted acoustic effects. Um, so it's important for the two things. One, that that's structurally, you know, it's not going to go anywhere, it's screwed down and, uh, and wherever possible has got, um, it, it's sealed within the, uh, within the space. And, and two, the other thing is, you know, even, even the tightest of things is going to resonate at a certain frequency. So it's important to fill that, any voids with uh, rock wall. Um, it, it, it doesn't need to be particularly fancy, just packed in there with rock wall. Um, so that there's no, there's no, basically if any sound gets in there, it can't, it can't bounce backwards and forwards between the wall and the back of the, uh, the cabinetry. It just, it's just a dead space. Um, so we've, you know, we've, wherever possible, we've, we've packed those in there so that there's, there should be, you know, no, nothing, no squeaks, bangs, or rattles that are unexpected unless they're putting out the speakers. Funnily enough, uh, one of the issues we're going to have uh, in the room is obviously the acoustics and how we deal with those, and we uh, we've managed to uh, create some clever clever ways to deal with those so actually around the surround speakers you obviously want a diffusive panel so it's, it's breaking up that audio and it's it's not coming from any particular direction it's coming from the sort of the space around and behind you and uh, because of the blu-ray shelving uh, we've actually created that diffusive surface really anyway because you know the blu-rays aren't smooth and it's got the shelving at different levels so we're, we're going to create a you know, small uh, it's not going to be perfect but it's it's there from a you know that that point of view as well so there was a slight reason why we, why we put that in there on the back wall, we've got a, a 120 mil stripe that runs right around the wall. Obviously, we can't do a lot with the, uh, the patio windows, but the rest of the space, we've got we've got a space where it's directly um, opposite the front uh, speakers, left centre right. Um, so we can put there some uh, reflective panels, um, some absorbent panels, depending on the acoustics of the room. So we'll do some do some measurements to test it, and then we can we can alter those accordingly. Um, to, to make sure that that space is you know, it's tuned as well as it can be in a, uh, in a room that's existing and uh, you've got all the, the drawbacks that we've talked about. It's worth noting that because the acoustic properties of a room have such a big bearing on the overall sound quality, the uh, design of the room acoustically has um, at least as much influence over the overall sound quality as the choice of equipment. So if you were to put really high-end equipment into a poorly designed room, you're unlikely to get high-end performance out of it. So now that we've paid close attention to the acoustic design of the room, let's talk about what equipment we're going to have in there. Join me in my next Build Diary video.